Well, <clears throat> Andrew McKill, hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good evening. I'm Silburn here, on the late one with Silburn, and we have a very interesting show today, tonight, wherever you are. I think um, if you are from, uh, <clears throat> if you're in Nigeria, and I've got some Nigerians on, if you're in Jamaica, if you are in the UK, wherever you are in the world, welcome, welcome, welcome. My topic today is, has political correctness gone mad? Right? Simple, straight to the point. Question is, are people afraid to speak up? Why? Or maybe we should be rapping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> we should be rapping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's good, 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 good. Let me just see who is on. Okay. Welcome Sandra, welcome Tony. Yes. As a matter of fact, please share this video at the same time. Okay. <clears throat> Awesome, some exercise. My 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 message for the t for 2018 is going for gold. Everyone has a message for each year. Mine is going for gold. You exercise and everything like that. Going for gold, not silver, not bronze, but going for gold, ladies and gentlemen. My message for the 2018 is going for gold. Okay? And when you go for gold, you will go for the best. Okay? So, here I am. I'm just waiting for a couple of persons, but at the same time, I'll talk and I'll say, Hey, Kavita. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's it. Fantastic. Going for gold is the, the motto for my new year message there's always a message for new year i think last year my message was simply saying um anything can happen and i think it still applies anything can happen but in order for things to happen you've got to place yourself in a position to receive anything can happen that's the motivational talk anything can happen okay anything can happen that was 2017 my 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 thought thought when it was anything can happen, but for this year, it is going for gold. Going for gold, ladies and gentlemen. If you can hear me right now, press share, press share this button because what I'm going to speak tonight is explosive. It is something that we all know about, but it is explosive at the same time. So, I just like you to just press the share button, share it with some friends because it has political correctness gone mad. As people, are people afraid to speak up? You know, I'm going to tell you something which I, uh, you know, my, my, um, when, when I put the topic up, um, one of the first message which I receive, and if I can find the message which I receive, um, and this is one of the messages which you receive, and, and you've got to make sure that as an, as an individual that, you are not constrained by the present day. You're not constrained just by ambition. You're not constrained by pleasing Tom, Dick, and Harry. Right? Now, when I post this video, I did this video while I was leaving my office today. And the video was simply saying that, ladies and gentlemen, join me tonight. Because I'm going to speak about why we are afraid to speak up. Why are we afraid to share our opinions? Why are we afraid to share our views these days in a nice way? My first message came out. This was saying, Mr. SS, I'm older than you. 
So my advice to you as a politician, fall in line and don't speak your mind. What sort of bull crap is that? What sort of stupidness is that for someone who is of an elder age saying to a younger person, I'm older than you. So my advice to you is as a politician, fall in line and don't speak your mind. That's the problem with society. Whereby we all are told to fall in line and don't speak your mind. You know, I had a guest the other day and... And he's Mr. Mr. Peter Herbert. He's the chair of the Society of Black Lawyers. And one of the things that we're talking about, and it's just like with the Ava Weinstein thing, and also with people in the judiciary, whereby sometimes persons don't want to rock the boat. Because if they rock the boat, it may affect their career growth. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that if your career growth and your success in life is by not being who you are, then you have failed. Fundamentally, you will die in that grave as a carbon copy of what you're not because you're falling in line. And by falling in line, you become like iRobot. And when you're like iRobot, then you become just another carbon copy of other things. It's like when people do branding, people brand people into others, brand people into the mindset that they want them to be. So as a result of that, you are not yourself. So this person saying to me, and he knows himself, I have no problem with that. I'm older than you. So my advice to you is, as a politician, fall in line and don't speak your mind. And that's the problem with society, ladies and gentlemen. That's the problem why our children are now being sexualized by the system and what is around us, whereby no more can we speak up on the issues that mean so much to us because we are actually afraid for sharing our views, sharing our opinion, sharing our mindset. So I said to the person, maybe, this is what I said, maybe my outcome in life is not to be a politician, but to be tuned to thine self. And I always said, to thine self be true. 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 To, to thine self be true. Right? To thine self being true. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that you are true to yourself. Because I'm going to play this video here. And, um, and I am just want you to listen to it if I can. Um, it's about political correctness gone mad. And if I can find it, here we go. To apologize. Political correctness gone mad in the U.S. For media pundits and giggle fests. A pussy willow branch. <laughs> it's really so stupid. <laughs> to advertising trying to spice up an old concept like Oreos and milk. To sports I'm managers praising Fidel Castro. I'm very, very, very sorry. Even political comedians mixing religion and female body parts. Maybe women could protect their reproductive organs from unwanted medical intrusions with vagina mangers <laughs> saying anything in public even when obviously joking has become a minefield you say something off color you tweet something off color all of a sudden you've got 15 people criticizing you for whatever as in an attempt to take you down a notch pushing an increasing number of people into endless apologies anderson cooper should not have had to give a public apology for giggling at the word pussy willow i think that's adorable that's just the 10 year old boy and him emerging and scampering about in short pants it's really absurd i mean people get more angry about a word like pussy willow than they do about, say, a drone strike that kills 30 innocent people in Afghanistan. We apologize, we really do. Meaningless political correctness has given rise to meaningless rituals of remorse. An apology from Rush Limbaugh. It's like going to church and going through all the motions but not really believing in God. Of gender discrimination. In an overly litigious culture, cries of discrimination are often simply an excuse to sue. Ladies like this. See, what is happening, as you can see right there, is that Everything is now becoming so political correct. But let me find the definition of political correctness. Okay. And I'm setting the stage. Um, political correctness and political incorrect. The term political correctness commonly abbreviated as PC. You might see many people saying PC or P.C. Is used to describe languages, policies, 
or measures that are intended to avoid offense or disadvantage to members of particular groups in societies. Since the 1980s, the term has come to refer to avoiding language or behavior that can be seen as excluding, marginalizing, or insulting groups of considered disadvantage or discriminated against, especially groups defined by sex or race. In public discourse and media, it is generally used as pejorative, implying that these policies are excessive. Political correctness, many people tend to align that with the liberal agenda, right? If you're of a political, religious persuasion, based on you saying what you believe, to a certain extent, depending on where you are, depending on the time, depending on the season, that can be termed as political correct, whereby it becomes offensive. Right now, if you preach Jesus in the street, it is now becoming offensive. I, I saw a preacher the other day was speaking, I think it was David Young or whatever, and someone said, you're offending me. To the point where he switched the whole thing and said, hang on a second, you're offending me for trying to say that I shouldn't preach, where whatever I'm speaking about is in the Bible. You have seen persons now who are actually saying, hang on a second, I don't like that political party or I don't like what that political agenda is saying or whatever like that. Because it doesn't fall in line with the political persuasion or the political correctness of the season that is deemed to be offensive. And then all, all forces then come at that particular voice, that lone voice. And most times that lone voice is actually the bigger voice. But somewhat, the bigger voice or the mass has now become very quiet. The bigger mass of voice of persons are now being so quiet. Let's use Lewis Hamilton. And I'm not going to give this much airplay because someone from the, um, the gay lobby group saying that, listen, this is such a, a, a ridiculous thing. Because guess what? He's right to say what he wants to say. But it is because persons are so much trying to ascribe blame to everything. Always want to take down someone. So therefore now what they're trying to do now is take down Lewis Hamilton because of what he said. But guess what? What if Lewis Hamilton said this? What if Lewis Hamilton said, hey, you look great in that pink dress. Awesome. Lovely, my nephew. He would not have gotten that backlash because he said something which everybody or the political correctness agenda would not mind. But guess what? Lewis Hamilton would still be saying and giving his opinion, still giving his view. Hey, I love that pink dress. It's great on you, my nephew. That wouldn't really the backlash. But because he said, boys should not be wearing dress or princess dresses. Boys should be boys. Oh, whoa, that's become offensive. Because it does not fit into the narrative of the day. Now, if this was maybe 20, 30 years ago or so, that would be all right. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So there's a song by Lou Rawls that said, what's the matter with the world as the world gone mad? You know? And then this thing is, this next song, the next word in the song says, hang on, nothing is wrong with the world, but it's the people that is in it. Yeah, nothing's wrong with the world, but it's the people that is in it. So therefore, you have to ask yourself this question now. I'm in this world. I've been on this world and this earth for a period of years. Are my beliefs now all becoming wrong? Are what I always believed in for years have become obsolete, void, null, kaput? Now I've got to unlearn and relearn the world process. Like, like the, the Maslow theory. Unlearn and relearn. Or one should actually stand there going and say, hey, 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 oh, oh, back up a second, boy. Back up a second, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I believe. This is what I think. And therefore, I'm not going to impose it upon yourself, but I actually want to share my views. The government of the day has put out a consultation in regards to how sex education should be taught in schools today. Right? Because 2000 was the last time that a consultation took place. 
and it wants to look at the world LGBT, the transgender discussion, and all those sort of things. For because the world has evolved. No, the world has not evolved. Time has evolved whereby people have actually changed, ladies and gentlemen. So therefore, there needs to be this discussion, this level of understanding. But others have jumped on the agenda whereby they're saying the government is seeking a way how to make LGBT and transgender mandatory in schools. Well, some people are saying, hang on a second, is there an opt-out clause? Well, I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, there's an opportunity for consultation. There's an opportunity to share your views. You're not being disrespectful. It's because you have a voice. They said it's democracy. They say we're living in a democratic world. They say that where your views is important. But no, if you say something against the norm, you're now be called a bigot. Now, let me find what my good friend actually said. But before I do that, and while I look for that, let me play another, another video. This is, this is, this is one of Book, Brain Droppings. I wrote some things about politically... Political correctness. In an earlier book, Brain Droppings, I wrote some things about politically correct language. But I left out a few areas. I neglected three important groups of people who have had this awkward, dishonest language inflicted on them by liberals. I omitted those who are crippled, ugly, or stupid. And so, to address these earlier omissions, I'd like to make a brief return visit to that playground of guilty white liberals, political correctness. Political correctness is America's newest form of intolerance. And it's especially pernicious because it comes disguised as tolerance. It presents itself as fairness, yet attempts to restrict and control people's language with strict codes and rigid rules. I'm not sure that's the way to fight discrimination. I'll repeat that. Listen to this. Because it comes disguised as tolerance. It presents itself I'll repeat this again. Because it comes disguised as tolerance. I'll repeat this again. Because it comes disguised as tolerance. It pre- Political correctness come disguised as tolerance. But in real terms, what is happening is that it is actually somewhat restricting, somewhat suppressing another segment of society. It is disrespecting, suppressing another segment of society. So therefore, is it just one voice that should be heard? Or should all voice, all ideas contend? Now, we're not talking about being rude. We're not talking about being out of order. We're talking about having respect for each other. Right? And my, as I said, 2018 is going for gold. And in going for gold, you actually go for your gold at the same time. Gold, G-O-L-D, you go for gold. But what I do not want to see is whereby persons are suppressed from not speaking their views. Now, that's why they don't like Donald Trump again. Okay, there's other factors about Donald Trump. That's why they don't like Jacob Rees-Mogg again. Oh, maybe there are some other factors about that as well. But these are persons that actually speak their mind. Right? The, the, the world is lacking now of persons who are authentic, that speak their mind and share their views. And I tell you this, and I kid you not, just like in Bible days of old, when there was the, the prophet, and the prophet said, there is no one but just me. Oh, no one, no one. And the, and the Lord said, there's many. And he opened his eyes, you know, the eyes of the Spirit. And he saw thousands upon thousands. So many will say, there's only one. There's no one. I, people, I was speaking, to, listen, I've been speaking to people about this thing. And people are hush. People are hush and say, yeah, I want to say this, but oh, we can't say this. Oh, we, 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 can't, we can't say this because they will come down on you on a ton of brick. Oh, you, you get sacked. Oh, you can't. And I said, but why not? Why can't you share your views? Why can't you say, hang on a second. This is my belief. This is my brotopsy. This is my thinking. Just like oh, you have yours. But then we try to find a common ground, a common element, which seems to be lacking at times, ladies and gentlemen. Why is it lacking? Why is there this fair? Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe because sometimes people take it one step too far. And, and yes, some This is are, my thinking. Yes. Just like when you have yours. But then, wow, that is when you get a, a feedback, you know? And, and, and that thinking, your thinking, then somehow... Because it don't line up with the thinking of the day. And that's why I say the day. Because maybe 10 years ago, it wasn't 
the day, that thinking at that time. But today it is the thinking. And I kid you not. I kid you not. In 10 years time, God tarry. Remember, God is coming back, believe it or not. I'm, this is my belief. Again. <laughs> this is so perfect. My belief is that Jesus Christ is coming back. Many people do not believe that. But I do not force it down someone's throat. That's my belief. That's what I believe in. That Jesus Christ is my Lord and personal Savior. That's what I believe. Some people don't believe that. Nothing is wrong with that, ladies and gentlemen. But I must share my belief. What if I force it down your throat and say, that's the only way and hells don't bring fire, bam, 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 boom, bam. You know, now, that's a bit different. That's not being respectful. You know what I'm trying to say? I had a discussion the other day and talking about trans transgender. Bit, and someone said, what if someone is born with a particular way? And I said, well, there are ways that can be addressed. The doctors, the medical and the support network that's respect you see, the, the, you see we have got to understand how we actually address these things ladies and gentlemen you should not be afraid to share your views and I challenge everyone that listen to me because it's how you do it with respect but what I do not want to see is where people are suppressed listen I'm a member of the Conservative Party. And I found out something some time ago when I was doing my campaigning for the first time. And people were saying, oh, they're going to they're gonna ridicule. Hi, Venice, how are you? Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the show. Please share the show. You know, whether you like it or not, this is my views. I'm just telling it to you straight. You understand? Um, and they said, oh, the, the black people do not like the Conservative Party. And you'd be called a Uncle Tom, you'd be called a Coon, you'd be called a Bounty, and all those other names and stuff like that. I said, well, that's their problem. My name is Silburn S. B. Sidiel, the son of Eric B. Sidiel from Jamaica, Ocherius, whereby I know who I am. I have my identity and I'm very clear about that factor. So therefore, if they have got a problem, that's their problem. So for me, anyone knows me, I don't force persons to follow me. I don't force persons to join my political thinking. I don't force persons to join my spiritual or religious thinking. I just be me. But I share if you want to know. So... And then, while I was going to doors, knocking on doors, and I see a black person come, and they'll say, no, no, I'm not, I'm always labor because of what Tories did and Margaret Thatcher, and I get the full story. Then I go to another door, and another black person come, and they say, hey, I'm conservative. Great to know that, you know, there are more people, black people doing this. And, and, and I said, you know, yeah, we get the hard times, you know, we get, to, get a lot of hit down, and I said, oh, cool. You go to other doors. Well, black people are conservative. And I said, hang on a second, it's a lie. There are persons there, but guess what? They are not wanting to share their views because it is not political correct for a black person to be a conservative member. It is not political correct for a black person to become a member of the Republican Party in the States or so. So therefore, you are deemed and seem to be offensive, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I talk about the element, the black element at the same time, where we find the common denominator, find the common ground, because that's freedom. There's a level of freedom where one can actually express themselves. There's a level of freedom where one can say, I am this, I am that. And I respect you for who you are. I respect your sexuality for who you are. But don't force it on me. And I won't force mine upon you. But that's me. I respect your religion, background, Asian, uh, Muslim, you know, um, Ari Krishna, whatever like that, agnostic, egoistic, whatever istic. I respect that. But don't make it look as if to say all society should follow that pattern. All society should follow that ideology. No, I want to create my own ideology. I create a black element ideology whereby all black people Instead of fighting and killing off each other or ridiculing each other, coming around each other like a hyena, going for the kill, is to look for that element. Look for that key factor, that key motive, a key denominator. You know? You know? And, and, and because of that, then you find a ground to, to follow through. Venice, there you are. You are a typical example. But as you know, Venice, whether you like it or not, this is what society says in, in regards to conservative. You said not so. My grandparents voted conservative. I pop across the parties. I vote conservative because they are more supportive of self-sufficiency. That is it. That's a classic example which is just coming true. And she's a black person. But when I, when I started off in this country, in 1992, I was told left, right and center, black persons do not vote conservative. It is just not political correct to do so. And I proved that wrong. So therefore, one has got... And 
You see, ladies and gentlemen, the reality of life is this. You have got one DNA, which is only ascribed to yourself. You've got one blueprint, which is only ascribed to yourself. You've only got one fingerprint, which is only ascribed to yourself. Then why try to live a life which is not you? Why try to live a lie? Why die? Why go to your grave? Why live a lie by not being true to yourself are? Do you think that the, the, the whole system or the whole world can crush everybody? No, I kid you not. There's a mass of people who agree with what I'm saying now. But they need freedom and to be free to speak objectively and to share their views without being cowed on. <clears throat> so this is what I say. <clears throat> I say this. Why not create a coalition of the voice? I'm not going to say the voice of reason. Because I don't want to patronize it to say other oh, voices are not the voice of reason. Because they are the voice of reason in according to their spheres of influence. But why not create a voice? <clears throat> that voice which is a voice that think like this. That think X, that think Y. That voice which is not political correct. That voice which says, I want to share my views. I'll let you listen to this further. Just one moment. Um, it's, it's very important presents itself as fairness, yet attempts to restrict and control people's language with strict codes and rigid rules. I'm not sure that's the way to fight discrimination. I'm not sure silencing people or forcing them to alter their speech is the best method for solving problems that go much deeper than speech. Listen to this. Therefore, Listen to this. those among is the best method for solving silencing people or forcing them to alter their speech is the best method silencing people and forcing them to alter their speech and speech is also like their thinking right is not the best way to solve society's problem i'm not sure silencing people or forcing them to alter their speech is the best method for solving problems that go much deeper than speech therefore those among you who are more politically sensitive than the rest of us may wish to take a moment here to tighten up those sphincter muscles because I'm going to inject a little realism into the... Okay, so what, what he's saying right there is silencing persons, persons who have a different views or whatever, is not the best way to solve society's problem because you know what? That gives the rise to Brexit. Those things give the rise to Trump. Those give rise to the, the, the group which is like out in the wing whereby they are saying there's this... Listen, <clears throat> you know what is pent-up frustration? You know when people blow... Sometimes they say in mental situation whereby people, there's so much thing which is embodied in a person that needs to just break out. Because guess what? A lid. A lid is on it. And that lid one day will break and it explode because people feeling suppressed. Right now, there are many people feeling suppressed. They're seeing what is happening in the school. They're feeling suppressed. You know? And... It, 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 I'm sorry, it is George Carlin who had political correctness is fascism pretending to be manners. George Carlin, that's a person I just mentioned a while ago. Political correctness is fascism pretending to be manners. Okay? Right? So, when, so back now to the point where people are feeling suppressed. You see, what I'm talking about is freedom here. You've got to be free. Marcus Garvey said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but yourself can free your mind. That's not just about a black issue only. Nah. It's a thing that crosses all races, all creed, all tongue. That why people love the song by Bob Marley. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. I have no fear for our atomic energy, but none of them can. Think about that for a second. Why is that song love worldwide? Why is that song not just love in areas where there's black struggles? Because it resonates deep within. That people need to have this level of freedom. Freedom is not just for those who are being subjected to the physical attributes or characteristics of slavery. 
but it also attributes to persons in society of today. Whatever race, whatever creed, whatever tongue, in that mental state, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but yourself can free your mind. So therefore, we have a responsibility. You and I have a responsibility. This is not about being bigoted. This is not about being a homophobe. This is not about being a transphobe or whatever they call it. They're creating words every day. Every time there's something that goes against the norm, they put a phobe to it. You know? Every time. But why is that? You know? So therefore, my thinking is this. Speak up, man. Go for goal in 2018. Speak up. Speak your mind. Speak what you believe. They said sometimes, the truth is what you want it to be. <laughs> so therefore, let it be your truth. You know, in Jamaica, they talk about brotopsy. So therefore, it could be, what is your brotopsy? If my brotopsy is different then, now, than then, I need to have some word with my parents. Well, just my mother now. Because my father rests his face. So are we saying then that things that we knew we're wrong. You know? And that is crucial, ladies and gentlemen. Then he's clearly said, education is powerful and everyone should know the history of the country they live in. It's important to know the history of the country you live in. But it's also important more to understand the history of where you're from. Because knowing where you're from, I believe, is one of the fundamental factors, ladies and gentlemen. Knowing where you're going, once you understand who you are, is a fundamental factor, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you to take this moment and share this video right now. Press share to share someone because what I'm talking about, freedom, liberty. Freedom and liberty in the mindset. The mind needs to be free, ladies and gentlemen. One needs to be set free. One don't need to be constrained because of the fact that I'm going for this particular job. I'm going for this particular position. So because of that, I need to suppress myself. Because when you suppress yourself, you're actually suppressing life. You're actually suppressing the future of someone. You could be suppressing the future of your children, children, children. Because they, the children, and I say this to you and I kid you not. They, the children of today, will hold us accountable for things that they're going to be subject to. In 15, 20 years from now. They. And I don't want that to be on my hand. And I don't want it to be on your hand as well. It is a war. At the same time ladies and gentlemen. It's good against evil. Let's call it that. You know what I'm saying. But we don't do it in a, in a very um, blatant way. We do it in a strategic way. Right. Got to play the game as well. At the same time. But the most important thing. Is that just like all their agendas which are making sure that their voices are heard. Therefore, also, it is important that you ensure that your voices also is heard. You know? And, and that is fundamental. That is key. And Venice, I agree with you completely. Knowing where you are from to be able to comprehend your life in other country. It's important. You know? That's crucial, ladies and gentlemen. You know, now, you know, and, and, and as we talk about suppression, let's use a, cl a classical example. And I use my country of Jamaica. Right now, there's a video. And if you guys know my fa page, Facilities for Better Jamaica, there's a video which is trending now with this young lady who said she was abused by her father. And since she went out on the limb and actually blatantly saying it out, calling his name, calling out the families. When family members actually having a go at her, she calls them out and she's exposing them left, right and center. I posted it because it is something that I've been talking about was pedophilia. Pedophilia which is covered because many people have been suppressed. I'm talking about the word suppression, when, when one is suppressed. She's been suppressed for years. Many children have been suppressed for years. They're not adults and they're like, Children crying out within them for that freedom of being able to tell their story. To free themselves so they can live. Because guess what? You know when people are abused? Studies have shown that they also become abusers as well. And they become very overprotective as well. Nothing is wrong with that. So the level of suppression which is upon this lady. Go on to my page. Facilitators for Better Jamaica, you see her, this Jamaican lady, and she's just saying 
She's, you can hear a hurt in her voice. And she said this, which is powerful. That since she came out and started to speak about the abuse she had from her father. How she was raped by her father. How she felt her father's tongue between her legs and stuff like that. She, she blatantly saying it out. Not holding back anything. And at times she's burst out into tears sometimes like that. That's what we call suppression. Where it reaches to the point where it break. Because they say sometimes with mental health issues and things which you are blocked up inside of you, it can affect you physically as well. She, has, she says, I don't care anymore. I just want to say this. So what I'm trying to say is this. If we're not careful, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to reach to a point whereby we explode. Whereby the country that we live in sometime. As one writer said, the country that we're in could be sexualizing our children. Yeah? There's something I was watching again about chicken something. And you need to watch that, man. There's some devious people out there. And somebody said, well, not all persons of that nature is like that. And I say, listen, I'm not defending no man. You know? I'm not defending no woman when it come on to these things. Pedophilia, whatever, whatever race, whatever. I'm not defending nobody. Okay? But people are going to start exposing people on these things. You know? Very clearly, it is on Facilitators for Better Jamaica page. On my Facebook group, just type in Facilitators for Better Jamaica. You see that story. And there's more from her, the original. I put on the part two there as well. That's what happens when there's an explosion of because of suppression. You know? You know? And, and that's, the, that's the key thing, ladies and gentlemen. So, so therefore, this topic today is not about sexual issues. This topic today is not about religious issues. This topic today is not about cultural issues. <coughs> this topic is, not, is about all these different... This topic is about freedom. You know? You know, this is about one actually being able to now say, listen, I want to speak up, man. I want to share my views, you know. And, and right, as Kavita said, the coming generation is beyond control, man. Because guess what? We're children now. You can't even speak to children these days. It is politically incorrect to say this to children. Children can't even say to you, I'll take you to social service if you dare do that as well. So now people cannot even discipline their children. You know, children are being missing sometimes, counterline, all over the country, whatever like that. People are afraid. People see things happening out there on the street. Instead of trying to address it, they're taking pictures so they can get likes. And that's one of the reasons I didn't do a show specifically on the Lewis Hamilton thing. After I watch a pro after I listened to LBC the other day and someone said, it is ridiculous. People are just posting this thing because of likes and whatever like that. Didn't make any sense. The only thing I said is this. Lewis Hamilton had nothing to apologize for. And I know without a shadow of doubt that apology was from his publicist. Because guess what? If he loses sponsors, they lose money and they get sacked. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because as I said this again, and I say it again, if Lewis Hamilton had said, Whoa, what a pretty princess dress you're in, my nephew. You look fantastic. You're going to look like Princess Meghan. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. What do you think people would say? Nah, it wouldn't have that backlash. They'll say, Lewis Hamilton, you're on the right step, man. And then that, and guess what? And if that was Lewis Hamilton's view, nobody would have a problem with that. But because he said, little boys should not wear dresses, pink dresses. Or princess dresses. You know? <laughs> and because of that, he has a backlash. Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't put it up on Facebook, you know? But I said to my boy, come on, man. You know, you know be a man, man. <laughs> we're men, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? You know? Girls, you're girls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Uh, you know? You know, hi, 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 Adrian. I don't know, guys. I don't know. But, you know, 
God is coming back soon, you know what I mean? You know, and, and you know, you don't want to live your life whereby um, you're living a lie, you know. And I'm just being straight up. I'm just being fair and just being honest with you, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and that is right. That's the thing again, what Kavita is raised. You can raise them your way, but we still cannot control external influences. And, and that is correct. You know, as long as you do what is right in your best of your life, you know, but the, the external influences, I believe we still have a part to play with external influences, Kavita, because as the government has said that they are doing this study, they're doing this consultation and they're inviting people to do, to share their views. But the majority of people that will be sharing their views won't be persons actually who are advocating a particular way. There'll be, there'll be people who are actually um, advocating a particular agenda and stuff like that. We all know that, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's very important that we all play that part, you know? And as Kavita said, the coming generation is all for liberal living and over-tolerance of things. We're coming to a point where gender is now very... You know, guys, this is it. <clears throat> I was looking at a court order today at my office, and, and when you look at the order, you know, you got... I won't mention the names, you know, but it's a boy and girl, you know? boy and girl and I'm saying my days after a while they, they won't put boy or girl or male or female oh my days what are they going to put oh my days I can imagine that judge is going to go crazy what are they going to put gender neutral 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 x x x x what are they going to put I'm sure there are studies and they're trying to work that out come on man life is getting too complicated you know Benny said, I asked my grandchildren, who are you? They both said, I'm a boy. And my granddaughter said, I'm a girl. You know, my children even said, there's no Santa Claus. You know? Yeah, they said, there's no Santa Claus. They're in discussion. They said, nah, there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I said, I'm the Santa Claus. You know what I mean? I'm not making any, any fat belly bearded man jump down any chimney. I, I think the chimney is even blocked off to steal my thunder. The money that I work hard, my wife and I, and give our children a gift for some fat guy to actually claim responsibility nah but that's my view i'm not imposing it on anybody that's my view that's how i taught my children <laughs> you know what i'm saying and many people think like that as well many yeah many ladies and gentlemen many people have the sheer views you know you know, since I put this thing out and start to speak, it has freed up some people to actually share their views. You know, it has freed a person to say, I agree with you. People say, I'm behind you. Somebody say, oh, no, we can't say those things, Silbert. We can't. I said, why can't we say those things? Why? You need to ask yourself that question. Why can't you share your views? Is it your job? Is it your... Stand, standard in society even churches these days preachers don't want to rock the boat they don't want to say anything they lose their charity license or whatever like that but I think it would be great to have a coalition ladies and gentlemen I think it would be great to have a, I don't know inbox me tell me what you think man let's, let's go to town on this I think it's great to have a coalition of, of voices you know? I'm not going to say the voices of reason I'll just say, let's say a uh, coalition of voices I just put in bracket, I won't say the voices of reason. Because what I'm saying right there is that other voices are not the voice of reason. As I said before, everyone have a perception and their perception is based on their belief. And belief is fundamental and it's powerful. It's difficult to change someone's belief, ladies and gentlemen. But just because someone have a belief doesn't mean to say their belief is right. Doesn't mean their belief is wrong. You know, exactly, Kavita. You probably get done for hate crime. Exactly. I could get, get done for hate crime now. <laughs> you know? And, and that's it, Venice. People want to talk, but they're afraid. They're afraid. Fear is not of God. Fear to speak your mind is not right. Fear to share your views in a democratic society if you get it wrong. Why is it, why is it wrong? Why is it right? There's a song that says, and I don't remember it. It's a love song. It says, if love in you is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> or something like that. It's a love song. Anybody want the lyrics for a girl or something? If love in you is wrong, I don't want to be right. You know what I'm saying? If love in you is wrong. You know, I just remember that. Yeah. But the, the, the key thing is that if 
it's going to take you down. Somebody said, yeah. somebody said, are we willing to pay the price? You know, you know, Celestina Ferguson, that's correct. You can't dilute the truth, man. Can't dilute it. You've got to say it as it is. I like that one. I'm going to pin it. You can't dilute the truth. Share this video, ladies and gentlemen. Share it. You can't dilute the truth. The truth isn't to be diluted at all. It is to be free. And the question next would be, who determined the truth, Silburn? Who? Where is that line? Where is that authority figure? Where is that guidance that we take to determine the truth? Society now is a point whereby it's all good. Go. Anything goes, man. It's all liberal, man. As long as it feels good, it's good. As long as it feels right, it's right. You know? People are too easy to be offended. Freedom to share views and manifest them should naturally be qualified as Kavita said. Refer to the use of a third right, you know? Opinions can be dangerous, but the question is, where are we going to put that qualifier? Right? How do we qualify? some of the things that we want to say. How do we say it? Should there be a need for a forum? Should there be a need for a coalition? Should there be a need for a, a czar within the political fraternity, fraternity for the alternative voices? So um, I think one time in parliament, they were saying that Christians should not be, um, um, should I say, chastised or criticised. The Speaker of the House even came out the other day and said, rebels are not rebels. When we're talking about the, the Tory MPs and those who actually went against the government recent um, bill where they lost the vote, one of the Brexit bill. The Speaker of the House said, I want to implore you, members of Parliament, sh don't, don't let anybody say that you're a rebel because you are exercising your democratic right to speak upon an issue which means something to you and your constituent. Yes, that's what the speaker said. Because those who went against the norm of the party, like Dominic Grieve, like a couple other MPs, they were chastised. They were getting death threats. Tolerance is gone. A lack of tolerance for the alternative voice. A lack of tolerance for views which do not sit well with others. Then that is what the gentleman was saying. That is... Next, almost, what do you call fascism? Isn't it? We must be free to speak. And as the person who said to me in that message when I put up my video, Mr. Sidiel, if you're interested in politics, shut your mouth and fall in line. I don't have any respect for that gentleman anymore. I tell you this point black. How can I respect for an elder who dare say to me, I'm older than you. And if you want to go into politics, shut your mouth and fall in line. When you fall in line, ladies and gentlemen, you become an iRobot. Easy to be picked off. And then you become a carbon copy. And then you become what you're not created to be. And then you lost your unique nature. Then you lack, look, lose your credibility. Lose your, your integrity. Because you just want to survive. But I'm not talking about survival, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about living a life. Which is pleasing to God. Pleasing to your children. Pleasing to your community. And that argument could be said by others as well. But that's no problem. Because everyone has a right to determine their own future. Everyone has a right to determine their own destiny. You know? You know? It says, oh, you know, it says fall in line. Fall in line means to say, just line up. Shut him up. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> and listen, as I said to you, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, my name is Silburn Sidiel, son of Eric B. Sidiel. 
and I'm from Altrius, and I approve this message, right? And we have to put our heads out there. My head is out there. I've said it, you know, you know, and, and I stand by it, you know, and I offer myself as a voice to speak up on these issues. I offer myself as a voice to help people to break through that cycle of fear, break through that cycle of feeling like they're unable to speak up on issues. But one of the key factors is we've got to do it in numbers. So let's form a coalition. Let's form the voice. And what I said about the voice, not saying it is the only voice. Right? And that is key drop. And as Kavita said, mic drop. Boom. Bang. That's my message, ladies and gentlemen. It's easy, simple. And very straightforward. Enlightenment that sometimes society will not love up waiting to. Alright? We've got to rise up. 2018, let it be the time where we go for gold. Boom. Shagababam. <laughs> Alright? So anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, that's my message today. Very simple, very straight to the point. Don't be afraid. Um, share your views. You know, call on me. Share me, you know. I've, you know, I've got, it's interesting, I've got someone who contacted me the other day and shared some things to me about their school, where their daughter is going to, and some, some how they depict, they, that's a question is, this is a question they ask, what is the best and worst part of slavery to a class? What is the worst and best part of slavery? How can there be a best and a worst part of slavery? And then they also had, uh, <laughs> this is shocking, this is so shocking. They also had some pictures and they were trying to put some price to it. Got wine, a car, something else and a slave. And was asking the children in that class to actually put a price to it. There are sickening, disgusting things going on in schools. Many people are afraid to speak up. The person called and said, how do I address this? But the person don't want their names to go up there and do, you know, to expose. That's the thing. Nobody wants to be exposed. Nobody wants to rock their boat. Nobody wants to be the martyr for the cause. You know? You know, see you, Kavita. Bless you. Thank you for that. See you tomorrow in the office. You know, um, you know, so I don't know. Of course I know. But that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. My name is Silburn Sidiel. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Silburn or Silburn TV. Um, subscribe to the Silburn Show, which is at Silburn um, TV. Um, check out my, my, my latest shows as well, um, you know, and, uh, you know, subscribe to the Facebook live, you know, share it. Listen, 2018 is going for gold. Trust me. Off the rocket. Boom. So much is going to happen. We've got to stand up and speak up. Okay. Politely, correctly, but with firmness. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night and all the best. Um, for those who just join in, you can catch me on the replay. I was here from 1030. And the topic was simply about um, don't be afraid to speak up. Political correctness gone bad, gone mad, 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 and mad. And, you know, I'll see you around on the other side. And remember to watch a show with... Um, Paula Perry, that's my latest show which is going on there, check that out as well, <clears throat> and um, thank you so much for joining. I like that, coward dies many times till death.
Thank you. Bye-bye.